A two-day retreat for the Ministry of Information, Communications, Technology and National Guidance has ended. If you watch UBC, the images are very good now. The images are good. The programming is improving. But we are not there yet, so we continue. And the, under the Digital Transformation Program is where we are continuing to procure more transmission equipment so that we cover geographically the whole country eventually, but also ensure that the signals of UBC are clear but also stable. Many of you might be aware that UBC, we do run four television stations. UBC TV, that is the main. Uh, Star TV, that is the Luganda station. Uh, Magic 1 HD, an entertainment channel mainly. And U24, that we are planning to make sure that it becomes a platform where all the communication on development is carried. The meeting was characterized by agency and sector presentations. Uh, honorable members of parliament, the lockdown has um, affected our businesses very adversely. Um, for us who depend on uh, largely advertising revenue, when you have schools closed, you have places of worship closed, you have entertainment places closed, we are basically out of business. And lastly, commend more Mr. Don Wanyama of New Vision for the great work you have done in New Vision. But I want you to press harder, both government and the NPs, make sure you get some allocation of funding to revive the local newspapers. The Managing Director Uganda Broadcasting Corporation, Winston Agaba, was among the day's key presenters. Radio Uganda used to earn most of its revenue from the, unfortunately, death announcements. And uh, you remember those announcements? That was the biggest revenue earner for Radio Uganda. The private stations came and all that revenue also went. So we shouldn't look at a national broadcaster as a revenue generating. The managing director's presentation ignited discussions and praises from participants. <laughs> However, what remains clear is that agencies such as Uganda Broadcasting Corporation, Media Center, Uganda Media Council and Vision Group are operating in big debts. Uganda Media Center premises is being rented at about 16 million shillings a month. We don't have that money in the budget. The PS has to look around to top up. The building is dilapidated. As you have heard, we are not at all uh, financed. We, we, we depend on uh, meagre earnings from a few registrations and accreditations. It's so sad to, for me to tell you that since UBC was formed in 2005, because of the challenges of management and uh, the misnomer as to how UBC would be funded, we were not remitting NSSF of the workers, neither were we paying URA, neither were we paying Gumeme, neither were we paying for all the services we were consuming. So the debt burden that we have is over and above 80 billion Uganda shillings that is already audited by Auditor General. This was supported by the Parliamentary Committee and Permanent Secretary, Minister of ICT, Dr. Amina Zawede. Let us put a strategy in place of how we are going to approach. A war for funds is a war. We must be very careful in the way we go there because every sector is going to pull. Almost not funded because if we have a budget of uh, a budget allocation of less than 0.5 percent that looks like almost no funding so there is no way we can be able to deliver what uh, the sector has to do if we don't have the funding for that state ministers for ict and national guidance joyce nabosa sebuguao and godfrey kavyanga graced the closing ceremony with this journey we have started together with you i'm sure we shall do, we shall go, uh, we shall do a lot of work. And we, have, we also want to appeal to you that we should look at UBC as an enabler. We shouldn't look at it as a business entity. Because everybody thinks UBC should make money. If we say UBC should, net, should make money, then we shan't communicate as government. The two days retreat was referred to as timely and worthy for the ministry's future. Robert Onyango, UBC.